If there was a surgery that could shrink you down to three inches tall and make your savings 500 times better, would you do it? The movie starts in the future. The world faces overpopulation, severe pollution, and resource shortages. To solve this, Norwegian scientists create a procedure to shrink humans. After injecting a special agent, people are placed into an oven-like chamber. Two hours later, they emerge just five inches tall. The scientists first tested this on 36 volunteers, including the professor who developed the procedure and his wife. After shrinking, they lived in a protected environment to avoid dangers from animals and insects. Over four years, the waste produced by the group was only a small bag in the normal world. The volunteers even had miniature babies, astonishing everyone. Paul, an ordinary man, was fascinated by the concept, though his mother was unimpressed. She couldn't understand why scientists could shrink people but couldn't cure her back pain. Ten years later, shrinking surgery became more common, but it caused financial problems. Governments lost revenue from reduced consumer spending, and industries like construction and automobiles suffered since shrunken people needed far less space and money to live comfortably. A tiny house in the miniature world could be bought with just their savings. Paul an occupational therapist with excellent massage skills, frequently gives his wife, Audrey, massages and takes great care of her. Audrey dreams of owning a big house, but since both are working class, they can't afford it. One day, at a party with his friends Dave and his girlfriend, Paul learns they have undergone the shrinking procedure. Dave tells Paul that the shrinking operation isn't just about saving the planet, it's about living a better life. In their shrunken community, they have luxurious homes, top-notch facilities, and the best medical care. Since everything is smaller, expenses are drastically reduced. People no longer have to work as hard and spend their days reading, playing music, cooking, and doing yoga. Their savings are more than enough to live comfortably and happily. After Paul's mortgage loan is rejected, he and Audrey decide to give the shrinking community a try. Paul and Audrey were completely captivated by the idea of the shrunken lifestyle. A full set of diamond jewelry was just $80, and who wouldn't love that? The staff informed them that their current $152,000 in assets would be equivalent to $12 million in the downsized community. They could even buy a luxurious home on a 6,000-square-foot estate for just a third of that amount, plus the federal government offered tax exemptions for shrinking. Excited by these possibilities, they quickly decided to go through with the procedure. After signing the agreement, doctors shaved their hair, removed any metal dental work, and injected them with a shrinking solution before placing them in the transformation room. Once the surgery was done, the patients were now so tiny that nurses had to shovel them into glass boxes to send them to the downsized community. Even the doctors performing the surgery were also shrinkers. Afterward, Paul's teeth were reattached, and the nurse humorously brought him a regular-sized cookie, which now looked enormous. However, just as Paul's surgery was a success, he received a call from Audrey. She told him in a panicked voice that they had shaved her hair and were now shaving her eyebrows. Scared and unsure, she said she couldn't go through with the procedure anymore. Audrey realized that she had agreed to the shrinking surgery just to make Paul happy. It wasn't what she truly wanted, and at the last moment, she backed out. Paul was devastated. He had gone through with the shrinking surgery, becoming just five inches tall, all to buy Audrey the big house she always dreamed of. But after the surgery, Audrey fled back to the normal world, leaving Paul behind and eventually divorcing him. Paul had undergone the surgery to help save energy and reduce waste, but now he was alone. He found himself standing in a luxurious villa meant for both of them. Them. But without Audrey, the place didn't feel right. Paul watched as a courier unloaded their old wedding ring, now oversized in comparison to his tiny stature, and nearly cried. He was left with no choice but to sign the divorce papers, and he sold the villa for a smaller apartment. Paul decided to start fresh and soon met a single mother. He prepared an elaborate dinner, but in the shrunken community, the best side dish available was radishes. Despite the limitations, life in this miniature world was mostly similar to the real one and Paul even managed to find a normal-sized rose to enhance the romantic atmosphere. However, his mood was dampened by the noise from a loud party upstairs. Paul opened his balcony and yelled at his noisy neighbors. That's when Conrad, one of the neighbors, paid him a visit. Conrad told him that, in this community, neighbors are supposed to be friends. Instead of being upset about the noise, he invited Paul to join them at the party upstairs. His date with the single mother soon came to an awkward end. As he tried to kiss her goodbye, she rejected 
rejected him. Rejected by yet another woman. Paul didn't even wait for an explanation and left, hurt and upset. Carrying the oversized rose he had brought for his date, Paul decided to head to Conrad's party. There, he met a variety of people, including the first child born in the shrinking community and even a captain. And he ended up having a great time, drinking heavily and enjoying himself. When Paul woke up the next morning, he saw a janitor cleaning up the mess from the party. Conrad began talking about his philosophy of life and his way of making money. He explained that people chose to shrink to live the material life they couldn't have in the real world. By taking items from the normal-sized world and selling them in tiny portions, they could make huge profits. While Conrad talked, Paul couldn't stop staring at the crippled janitor. There was something familiar about her. He followed her and discovered she was stealing medicine from Conrad's cupboard. It suddenly clicked for Paul. She was Lon, the Vietnamese woman who had made headlines for protesting against the shrinking surgery. She had stowed away in a shrinking operation, only to end up working as a cleaner. Lon had been forced to undergo the shrinking procedure while in prison, and afterward, she managed to escape. When she met Paul, she mistakenly thought he was a doctor. She explained that her friend was dying and pleaded with Paul for help. Paul agreed and followed Lon onto a bus. As the bus drove further and further from the familiar areas, Paul realized something shocking. There were ghettos even in the tiny world. There were still people here who couldn't afford basic necessities like food or medical care. Lon explained that her husband had died during the shrinking process because the doctor had forgotten to remove his gold teeth. When he was shrunken, the metal caused his body to explode. Her friend, who was now dying, had arrived in the shrinking community without money and was suffering from stomach cancer. Paul wasn't a doctor, so he didn't know how to help Lan's friend, but he gave her a few painkillers to ease her suffering. When he returned the following week, Lan's friend had passed away. Trying to be helpful, Paul attempted to fix Lan's prosthetic leg. So, Paul ended up carrying Lan from house to house, helping her clean clients' homes in her place. As they worked, they collected expired food from various homes, which Lan later distributed to the people living in the slums. He started helping with whatever he could, offering aid to the sick and injured. One day, Conrad called for cleaning services again, and when he opened the door, he was surprised to find Paul and Lon standing there. Laughing loudly, Conrad embraced Paul and gave him a big kiss, excited about a new opportunity. Conrad revealed that he had a chance to make a fortune and was heading to Norway to deliver a secret item. He and the captain convinced Paul to come along, and Lon decided she would join them as well. Lon explained that after being forced to shrink, she had caught the world's attention. One of the professors who invented the shrinking procedure had even written to her. He had invited her to visit Norway, but because of her disability, she had never been able to go. Now, with Paul taking care of her and Conrad's boat, she had no reason not to join them. When they arrived, the professor shared alarming news. A massive methane leak from the Antarctic was threatening to bring about a global disaster. Whether they were normal-sized or shrunken, no one would escape this impending catastrophe. Though it was difficult to accept this bleak prediction, especially when it was laid out so clearly, Paul and Lon quickly decided that the best thing to do was to live in the present and make the most of their time together. The next day, the professor took Paul, Lon, Conrad, and the captain to a unique community that lived without the protection of a shield. They had dug tunnels deep into the Earth's crust, where they developed farming and animal husbandry. As the reduced size of people allowed the space to accommodate large numbers of inhabitants, the professor explained that the goal was to continue living underground until the surface environment could recover, at which point humanity would be able to return to the surface. The community had already been thriving for decades, and the next generation of shrunken people had grown up in this new way of life. With Earth now facing a fresh crisis due to the methane leak, the professor proposed a bold new plan to migrate underground permanently in order to preserve the future of humanity. He asked if they were willing to take this risk with him. Paul was moved by the sight of the courageous people who had chosen this path. As he stared out at the community, Lon gently reminded him that it was time for them to return. But Paul didn't want to leave. He wanted Lon to stay with him and help build a beautiful new world underground. Lon thought Paul was being unrealistic, but he felt that these were the people who truly needed their help. Paul reflected on his life and realized he had been doing everything wrong, shrinking himself, losing his wife, and breaking Lan's prosthetic leg. All these experiences had led him to this cave and to the right path. Despite Lon and Conrad's attempts to persuade him otherwise, Paul made the unusual decision to stay. He spent his last day enjoying the sunshine, dancing and playing the piano with the residents. As they sat together, 
Lon asked Paul why he had kissed her on the boat. Did he really love her? Paul deflected the question and asked what she wanted, leaving Lon feeling disappointed. She sensed that his affection was out of pity rather than love. They watched the sunset side by side. Lon wrapped her arms around Paul. When it was time to part, Paul tried to kiss Lon again, but she turned him down. Heartbroken, he walked away, holding the Bible she had given him, tears threatening to spill. Just as the door was about to close, Paul rushed out with his luggage, declaring that he loved Lon. Paul and Lon returned together to the slums of the shrinking community, embracing the idea that, as Paul's mother had said when she first saw the shrinking operation on TV, even if tomorrow brought disaster, they needed to value and care for the people around them instead of worrying about the future. The end. Please subscribe.